Hello all and welcome back to Uncharted X. This is Ben and I have another video swapcast for you today with a detailed look at a couple of just the most megalithic sites that you can find in Egypt. This was a very interesting couple of hours that we spent. Uh, the Snake Brothers, Kyle and Russ and I, sat down with Hugh Newman from Megalithomania and we got into a detailed look at the Valley Temple at Giza as well as the Assyrian at Abydos. Both of these sites have some similarities in kind of their megalithic construction and the way their pillars were formed, uh, the fact that they are essentially subterranean, they had multiple levels, but they also have some unique features and differences too and in this video we take a good long look around both of these sites and discuss them in detail as both Hugh and I have been to these sites a number of times. I'm sure plenty of you know who Hugh Newman is. I did do a podcast with him recently on my channel. He runs the excellent Megalithomania UK YouTube channel as well as the megalithomania.co.uk website. Just a quick note on these videos. I know I've been producing quite a lot of swapcasts and podcasts recently. They've been just tremendous fun to do and I very much appreciate everybody's time in sitting down and talking with me. I also think it's a good way to share a very detailed look at some of these sites, all of the little nooks and crannies and the things that go into kind of filming there for a few hours. But at the same time, I do want to get back to my more regular produced mini documentary style of videos. So that's my intention. The next video you will see on this channel will be, uh, I guess, another chapter in my advanced technology series, taking a close look at what's been discovered under the ground at Saqqara and beneath the Step Pyramid. And going forward, I hope to have a bit more of a balance between the two. I do have a couple of hours of interviews that I did in the last couple of weeks with Randall Carlson, but I will release that one after I get my next mini documentary video out. In any case, I very much hope you enjoy this swapcast, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. All right, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another swapcast with Ben from Uncharted X. And this time we are joined by Hugh Newman of Mechalithomania. He's also done lots of other projects. I've been following his work for years, so it's great to have Hugh on. Hugh, thanks so much for joining us, man. This is great. Yeah. No, no, it's fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, Indeed. so I think Ben's got footage planned for... What are we looking at, Ben? What are we, we going through today? So yeah, we, we got a couple of good ones today. Uh, I did also want to say hi to Hugh and that, and that we did a recently uh, did a chat on both of our... On my channel, I think it's on your That's channel right. as well. We did a, a podcast, so I have only just uh, sort of recently met Hugh and very much enjoyed um, chatting with, with him. And yeah, well, today, uh, and it's, I thought it'd be a great one. I know, Hugh, you've been to these places a bunch of times, and you have videos on these as well on your channel. But I figured we'd take a look at the Valley Temple at Giza and then also the Assyrian. Uh, both kind of similar, but different in a lot of ways. But yeah, both some just interesting, massive megalithic structures. All right, excellent. Let me... Uh, Excellent. And yeah, I, I should have mentioned that. Uh, I just listened to the podcast you guys did together. Oh, yeah. That was good. I loved it. So everybody should go check that out for sure. Yeah, I, we'll I, I, I enjoyed it as I haven't well. listened to that one yet. <laughs> what? Get out of here. Sorry, man. You're fired. I didn't do up. my homework this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think, uh, I think I'm actually recording my microphone this time too. So uh, All right. I'm trying not uh. to screw up again. <laughs> follow, follow in everyone's footsteps. Make this pro mistake move. Yeah, yeah. Pro move. Record yourself. Yeah. So what are we looking at? We're starting here. This is outside the Valley Temple. Look it at is all those ancient chairs. Yeah. Let me roll the video. Uh, in fact, I love this shot too. This is what probably one of my favorite shots. I use this one all the time. But it's it's the panning walk in front of where the Valley Temple sits, which obviously you can probably tell from the background. Uh, fairly uh, well known spot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this sits right at the end. So this is the, 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 the structure that's connected to the causeway that runs to the the second pyramid you can see there on the left of the screen. This this is the temple that kind of sits at the bottom, uh, called the Valley Temple because it, it sort of slopes down and often pyramid structures have these temples in a valley in front of them. Um, yeah, real, uh, real interesting um, location. Obviously, I mean, I'm sure many people uh, know a lot about this, but it's... Uh, we'll, we'll get in and take a close look at, at all the different aspects of it, or at least many of them. But as you can tell, kind of the interior core of it's built, made up of these just gigantic blocks of limestone. Yeah. And they look very heavily weathered. And we'll take a closer look at them and talk more about them as we go. But then the other thing to note is that it was all cased in, in granite. So all that limestone has been cased in granite. The interior structure is cased in granite. And, uh, you know, at a high level, the other the other part to mention here is, is that it's it's the remnants of what was here. There, there was quite a bit more to it at, at some point in the past. So I have, I have a couple of structural questions. Uh, what's the, did they 
flatten the bedrock there. Uh, <laughs> you know, the the original builders when they were putting these blocks there, how did they make that spot? Did they have to flatten things? You know, to make the foundations. I, I think a lot. I think a lot of it was was uh, was they kind of like landscaped a lot in this area. I mean, one of the things with this, as we go to the front of the Valley Temple here, in the front of the Sphinx Temple, we actually have that whole area which you can just see now was was water. There's actually sort of megalithic bridges going yeah. over, and so water came up very close to this particular spot. Um, and the interesting thing is about that is that the causeway coming down from the second pyramid, which comes down to the whole Sphinx and Valley Temple, that appears to be, I believe that's older. I think quite a few people agree with me on that. that mm -hmm. Maybe even older, maybe the, the origin point of the survey of the whole uh, Giza Plateau in effect. Yeah. Because if you look at the causeway from the Great Pyramid, it goes much further, almost into the local village of Nazalet. Um, and that would have then joined the water much further away. So that suggests that causeway and any temples were there then were built later. And so, because of the water coming in much closer to the okay. Valley Temple does suggest a, a possible extreme or older, you know, site or older part of the site. And then yeah. when you, you, you know, you look at some of these blocks here, we're looking kind of at the part of the Sphinx Temple here, I believe. They are gigantic, and the ones on the outside of the Valley Temple, these limestone blocks, and also the other temple up near yeah. the second pyramid, the, the, the stones yes. are just ridiculous. I mean, seriously megalithic. We're talking yeah. 100 ton, 200 ton estimates in some cases, maybe more. And so, yeah. number one, you know, why did they, why were they using such big stones? Number two, how do they move them? How do they quarry and move them? And how do you lift them up that high? I mean, it's yeah. utterly remarkable. And yeah. then you go, then it's almost like, you know, from what I can, what I've seen there, you know, the the granite is almost like being shaped to fit round these ruined right. limestone blocks, you know, possibly on the outside and inside, like in honor of this earlier temple. So the granite may be later. There's debate about this. And we can talk about this as we go further into the temple. We'll see more yeah. examples. But you see these pieces here, for instance. We're looking at these beautiful kind of curved pieces of the granite on the bottom against these huge limestone blocks. And, you know, these curved granite pieces, maybe you know this, Bill, but they thought to be on top, mm -hmm. going across the top of the temple outside. Right. Is that because, you know, so it has a granite, it would have had a granite outer and inner of the Valley yeah. Valley Temple, and the older limestone mega blocks would have been there earlier, and they kind of built That's around right. it. So I, I find that fascinating. Yeah, there's a, there's yeah, there's a a bunch of points to make about that. That you're right. I think the granite on the outside, um, well, just the location originally. In fact. In fact, one of the things that's really interesting about this, because we will come, I think, I don't know if I have footage of this later, but I just wanted to mention while we're out the front here, that, and this is something that John Anthony West reported at one point, was that, whether, and this goes to the landscaping and, and the, the foundation question, but they, dr they did drill down in front of this. So for one, I think they did find, there is some constructed stone here. They did find a, a boat, uh, a remnants of a boat that they reburied. But the other thing that's interesting, I think they, went, they drilled down around 100 feet down here. And there's still at one point, I don't know if I've got it in my footage, but I've got photos of it. There's still like the, the hole where they did a core drill out the front here. And it went down something like 100 feet and they found granite, oh. which is obviously this is a limestock, limestone uh, outcropping. So what's yeah. a, what is granite doing down there, which is kind of the interesting. Maybe there's, there's so it, it lends to the idea that there's possibly structures and things underneath, underneath. you know, as, as there are and easily 100 feet underneath the causeway, like the, the, the Osiris shaft, and, there's, and obviously the Sphinx is there, and uh, all of that sits, you know, I think there's quite a bit that could be found if we really went looking uh, underneath the causeway and underneath this whole area. Um, well, yeah, one of the things um, I've come across when I've been researching this is, um, I'm very, I'm a big fan of Robert Temple, Yep. He's written a book called, yep. called uh, the, the, the Sphinx Mystery and also Egyptian Dawn. Yep. And he's spoken at a conference. I've had lots of conversations with him many times. And, and he's found, he's been on top of the Valley Temple. He's climbed on top. And he's also been underneath parts of it as well and in places no one else has been. And he's found what he thinks are like areas where ropes would go down deep into the ground and they would yep. what they were used for is unclear but he's found a few different spots that's that yeah that, 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 that evidence like conduit of, thing right the, yeah and yeah. there's evidence of like the scraping of the rope on the granite <laughs> and the limestone suggesting they were doing something deep in the ground perhaps building like you 
you suggested possible other chambers that have yet to be unearthed. Um, so there's little anomalies like that he picked up on. And then, then when you go on top of it and you actually look on top, you actually see uh, mm. keystone cuts as well. You see, you see like yeah. uh, this traditional Egyptian and Peruvian to one up in many other places. Um, so they were, you know, had all these different styles of uh, working. And yeah, I mean, yeah, some of these granite pieces we're looking at here are pretty intense. Look at, look at yeah. the beautiful... Well, yeah. mastery of that almost like polished aren't they yeah you have you have those granite boxes i mean they're in the ground at the asara shaft so we know they were putting boxes underneath the ground as well and some of them are, are fairly large and actually you mentioned earlier you too that there's a temple that sits up at the, the actual pyramid complex up at the foot of of kind of the, the second pyramid uh that is as big as this site and i think we did a i've got a video where we sort of pasted off and did a rough calculation with yusuf and yeah you're talking like 100 120 ton uh, blocks of limestone and same sort of massive stuff up near the pyramid in fact at the end of this too i've got a couple other sites that look look just like this and i with less granite i think you know these weren't the only locations that they that uh, the ancients were doing work like this and so th this is this is we cut away to kind of the left side of the of the outside of the of the uh, valley temple here so you, you can see what's left of some of these i don't know what to call them like these curved balustrade almost box uh blocks and like you said, Hugh, I think these were up the top. But this is some incredible work. I mean, you, you kind of get an interesting perspective on the, the yeah. just the precise nature of the curvature. Um, and then there's like incredibly heavily weathered limestone pieces lying around too, which is right. interesting. I mean, they're they're the limestone blocks in the wall are very heavily weathered, but there's pieces on the ground there that I mean, unless unless somebody has busted those to look like that, Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, they're just. Well, that it's looks like it's been out in the weather for forever. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. There's and there's even up at the at the the the, the uh, structure next to the pyramid, uh, it's even almost more weathered. You've got these just there's some tremendous erosion that's happened to the limestone. And the interesting thing about that, I think Hugh mentioned as well, is that it seems like and 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 you know uh, Robert, uh, well I think Boval as well as Robert Shock have have come to the conclusion that this granite was shaped to fit the weathered limestone. And in fact, we'll see it as we go around the corner. Yeah. I've actually got a shot of where he, he looked at it and figured this out. So the idea is that the, the back of these granite blocks, and as you said, it, it cased all of these stones. So we had an outer and an inner layer of granite on both sides of this limestone. But there's there's ev some evidence suggests that the back side of these granite blocks were actually shaped to fit the eroded limestone blocks, which is... Yeah, can I don't bender, want to interrupt really. you, Ben, but can you you were can you back it up to where you were looking up at the wall, the limestone wall there a second? It was yeah, maybe yeah, let me, 10, 10, 15 seconds ago. Yeah, let me do this here. There was something I saw there I want to point out. Uh, up here? Keep going. Yeah. Back. Oop. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that that's it. Okay, yep. go forward again. You want the back side? I'll, I'll pause it here. Yeah, I need to watch the... There we go. Okay. Yeah, go forward. Let, let, let that go forward. I know you guys are dealing with a little bit of lag. Yeah, right there. Uh, this just cut out space or something? Or yeah, what is that? Yeah, look at that. Hmm. Yeah, it I'm not sure. It goes across two blocks. It's shaped Isn't that a seam right there? Or maybe it's not a seam. Maybe it's just part of the limestone. I'm I can't not sure. tell. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the things I've noticed with these blocks <clears throat> in this particular temple, this is what you get a bow back as well yeah. um, in the main temple. There, there, even though it's limestone, which has got severe weathering, you can't fit like a you know a credit card or a <laughs> bit of paper between the seams. Yeah. Even in the limestone, not just in the granite, you know, in the limestone. And so, and one of the other things you can start to see it here. And maybe we'll see more when we see more footage. That there's a polygonal aspect to this as well. Oh, yeah. Even the lime, even the mega limestone blocks. Not I mean, clearly we see that with the, the granite when we go inside the temple, but you get that with the, the the huge blocks as well, and they're kind of put together. But it's really hard to you got to really look carefully and catch it at the right light to kind of actually see the seams and the way they're shaped and they're kind of curved curved inner corners as well and yeah. um, so there's a lot of detail which you don't unless you really know really carefully take a look you don't see it and obviously when it was new you know however long ago that was um <laughs> you would have it would have almost been like uh you know like the the original casing of the great pyramid it would have been like clear perfect of really yeah. almost shiny 
you know, yeah. in some respects. And, and that's a good point too, because you, a lot of the finish in here is quite rough on the outside, and people think it was it was kind of deliberately done that way. But there's, it's almost like that that outer casing layer of the the very fine polished stone has 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 fallen off. It's, it's been damaged, or it's, yeah. there's an effect on the stone, which is an interesting theory if you if you consider maybe there's a reason that this 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 structure was cased uh and you know we saw some of the stuff at karnak where there was an effect to some of the granite i think this was all very very uh shiny and polished and uh and well finished uh earlier but it's it's this and you can see some little pieces of it here and there on the curve blocks you can see them this is the first time jimmy'd seen it he was astounded by it and, you know some yeah, of these I'm I'm astounded by this. I mean, yeah, like <laughs> 40 tons, 50 tons, probably some of these big blocks. Um, tremendous. Here's that, here's that corner ring. This is where yeah. it gets kind of crazy. I mean, just to, just to be able to do that, create <laughs> that, um, you know, even if you're doing that with like Lego size blocks, that'd be quite hard to, you know, manage. Yes. But this is kind of crazy. And obviously we have the comparisons with Peru, Saxe yep. Mark, Cusco and so forth. Um, but here they're kind of mostly kind of, flat rather than sort of puffy um but yeah i mean right. just the the detail of, of this i mean I, when i've been there with yousef awian as well he's he, he we're still like bewildered we're still trying to work it out because copper tools really um yeah. to create yeah. this kind of accuracy and precision um and i think you'll see here this is the first part you can't maybe you can't really tell but there there's a lot of mirroring going on so yeah. on one wall uh, you get almost a mirrored version on the other wall, yeah. and it's not—it's not exactly the same every time. They have artistic kind of differences, but it's generally doing that. And uh, this is something you find throughout this particular uh, temple, especially when we get into the main part of the interior. Indeed. And what are the little alcoves? Like I saw a, like the little, know, like yeah, a little, little inset mm. hole on the, I guess on the left wall when you're walking in. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah, there's a few of those about there actually. Are. I mean, I mean, some. I mean, when we get inside, the the larger alcoves were where supposedly these statues, these statues. These, was it diorite statues of Cafre mm -hmm. were found, mm -hmm. um, and the larger one was found in the pit. Um, but um, no one really knows what they're for. I mean, were they yeah. acoustic? Were they kind of tuning the temple, or was right. it actually you know a ceremonial ritual thing? Did they replace something there? Um, yep. It's really unclear. I mean, I mean, the mystery of Egypt, although we're told so much by the Egyptologists of what, what really was going on and when it was happening. We don't know. A lot of it is guesswork, and we all know that. So, um, yeah. and so again, our speculations could be as valid as any academics, um, Indeed. You know, Egyptologists. Yeah, it's it's just it's a giant story that we're all putting together based on the same amount of evidence. I just and I'll just I'll just throw this in here while we were going. I just paused it just to show you that it's an example of the finished surface here, the flat worked surface, and how it's it's different. And this has all been flaked off or fallen off or somehow either it's damaged or whatever. But I suspect this is what all of the walls were like. But today you just get that rough finish. But most I think originally they were they were flat and smooth, and you can kind of see how it's the yeah. difference. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You're right, Hugh. There's, there's people. We do. This tends to be put in textbooks and taught in school as, as if it's fact these days, and it's very much not the case. We, we're all, you know, particularly these early, early parts of, of, of history. You know, it's, it's a. We have a limited set of information that we're working with, and, um, you know, it's a. It's, I think, as you say, our in, the other interpretations, I think, are as just as valid as, uh, as, as the mainstream. It seems like yeah. an awful lot of work to uh, go in and take off all that polish. So if this is naturally just uh, eroded away off that granite, how long would that process take? I don't. Yeah, it shouldn't. I it mean, seems I, like, yeah, I don't know. These ones here are giant, aren't they? These are yeah. absolutely huge. These sloping blocks on the front here, massive, uh, and. Um, you know, it's just I just find it so. And then we started we start to see the alabaster floor in a moment as well. Yeah, we'll, is, uh, we'll get in. Another I, mystery. I think I took I wanted on this trip. This was the footage. This is footage from last year, end of last year. And I wanted we, I was like, we're not going in yet. I wanted to take a look on the right hand side here uh, and a close look. So in this area in front with these floor tiles, I believe is where they drilled. And keep your eye open for like a tube sticking out of the ground because that's where they did the drill. Uh, I feel like I've got it somewhere, but this. It got it extends further down here, and I think it turns into. 
I don't know, is, is, it, is this the Sphinx Temple here, or is, is the Sphinx Temple that small structure that's next to, like, the left forepool of the Sphinx, or is this, does, this, does this structure kind of flow it, into the Sphinx Temple? This is, the Sphinx Temple and the Valley Temple are kind of directly next to, next each, to each other, other. They're like okay. adjoining. Right. Um, but, you know, it's thought that but the Sphinx Temple is, number one, it's completely encased. Yep. It's mainly, obviously, as you know, it's mainly limestone, um, mm. and, and it's been cut out. I mean, basically, it's been almost like cut out, but, but it has no entry. It had no original entrance to it, which is odd, especially yeah. it certainly didn't have an entrance coming in from the area of the Sphinx. So mm. that's strange. So people are questioning what that really means. Also, inside it, you have these huge pillars, almost like megaliths standing upright and I think in pairs in some cases there is granite in there as well there are there are elements of granite I mean I've yep. not I've never been able to go in there I've tried a few times but yeah. I've never, never actually got in but uh Robert Temple has and following his work um he's found all these anomalies with both these temples really you know and the yeah. fact that he, he thinks, you know, he thinks they could be like separate temples as well, possibly built at different times, even though the limestone is quite similar. Right. This whole area you're looking at here, this this is the whole um, area that would have been probably had some water in it, um, it as well. It would have come right up to here. There would have been canals coming in from the Nile, which would have been fairly close when this was supposedly built, like a few thousand BC. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, uh, and this so this would have been mostly probably covered in water. Yeah, I'm just zooming in because I believe this here might be where they drilled down and they found granite. This this little oh, yeah. this is, is. A, a, the little prong sticking up. Um, but yeah, as you say, this this was probably full of water. Uh, it would have led down to the the original, I guess, Nile. Let me just uh, make that go back to the correct. Size. And if they were, that's interesting because if they drilled there and they found granite which could be evidence of boxes or chambers or something in a complex below ground and yet they had filled that area with water by digging a canal it, it seems could, like those it, underground chambers would also have been filled i don't know possibly yeah because yeah. if I it's limestone the water's gonna you know unless they sealed it somehow the water's gonna seep through yeah yeah, or like a granite structure. You're right. That it would, if there was a water table. I mean, we have yeah. the water table issues there today. You go down to 100 feet, and that that's you know the Osiris shaft is full of is yeah. uh, at the bottom is full of water. Uh, and they have that problem with the Sphinx too, right? They have to pump the allegedly. Yeah. That's what the they were doing. They were drilling. <laughs> one of <laughs> one of the many projects where they've been drilling under the Sphinx that don't really get um, right talked about or acknowledged. So yeah, yeah we, we, we pumping the water out, guy. Just pumping the water out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean they've been they've been digging under there since the seventies. I mean, there's you got footage of Lena and Hawass in the seventies going there. Let's uh, we'll move forward. There's 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 lots of these little caves and entrances into the into the uh, the uh, the limestone and these blocks that are just fascinating. Um, you know, these areas you, you wish you could you could get into and explore, but uh, rarely ever are allowed. But you find these all over the place at Giza. They tend to drift off into the into the bedrock somewhere, and you never quite know mm -hmm. uh, where they go. In fact, you have the same thing happening here, as we'll see on the in the in the in the temple itself. As we go up towards the Sphinx, there's a couple of locked doors that I've um, are very interesting, and I've never seen the other side of. Let me. Uh... So before we move past the the tiles on the ground there, what were those like? Ten feet on a side in some cases. Oh yeah, these are they're huge. Um, yeah. Much like up on the the. Uh, much like I think these are. You've definitely got some tiles going on here. Uh, yeah. Although there's lots and of how sand thick over it. Were they? I mean, those are that's those are huge pieces. Well, yeah. If if you look at the ones up at the at the uh, at the plateau at, at the pyramids, particularly the the second pyramid. In fact, you mentioned earlier, like the second pyramid. I, I my I the more I think about it, the more I think that it's a good chance that the 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 Huff so-called Kafra pyramid, the second pyramid, may be the oldest, the oldest because one, it's right. in the center. It's connected to the Sphinx and these areas where we have a lot of pretty hard evidence that these structures are older but it's also the most megalithic the biggest blocks in the foundation we i think we did the episode looking at it and if you look at the floor tiles up there some of those are probably a meter maybe a little more thick and wow. and they're also three-dimensionally interlocking with the bedrock beneath them so they they interlock with each other everything you look at here is no mortar like it's all like as as you said you can't fit a credit card in between them uh, incredible precision in the in the work, but the other thing is the same thing applies to the the bedrock and the tiles in the bedrock, the foundation layer. I think it's one of the most remarkable parts of Giza, and people just walk right over it, looking at the pyramids or the 
you know, these other structures, but some of the, the, the engineering uh, true wonder is kind of under your feet. Yeah, and so it's, you know, this is interesting to me because I'm just thinking construction-wise. So if you're, if you've already cut, you've moved the sand away and you've cut down to the bedrock, you've mm-hmm. got a foundation. So why would right. you bring in gigantic tiles of some other material unless there's yeah. A, yeah. a reason for that? You see what I'm saying? Like if yeah. you've already yeah. cut down to the limestone bedrock and you've flattened it, why would you need tiles of alabaster? Or, or, or limestone or whatever they are. Yeah, it, it seemed to be yeah. super important to, to, to lock these structures in. You know, they just, yeah. there was this, what was seemed to be a, a functional requirement to, to interlock this stuff so firmly that, you know, it, and, and why? You know, if it's not, if it is it, if these structures, so it leads you down the path thinking, was it, were they resonating? Or were they activated yeah. somehow? It was very important that they were solidly locked and to the earth. Like that, so it's you know right. you, you've you've hollowed out this, you've flattened this, uh, you know this this area of bedrock. Although in cases in the, the pyramids themselves too, they're not not just the second pyramid, but also the the main pyramid. It's not flat. Like there's there's parts of it are actually made from bedrock. So it's you've got tiles going into the ground, but you've also got the ground coming up, and and it's yeah. all locked together. Uh, even on the even on the the like the Great Pyramid, there's a few blocks here and there of its of its first course that are actually formed from the bedrock. They're like straight up out of the bedrock. Yeah. So it's it's a mystery, I, but I don't know. It seemed real important to lock these things in the ground. So here we go. We've yeah. kind of walked into wow. the structure now on the inside. And yeah, this, is, at- this is kind of <laughs> where it gets interesting, isn't it? This, isn't uh, it? We see in the cornering again and, and the joins. Look at that cornering. It's crazy. It's amazing. I mean, just that, I mean, why, I mean, why do that? I mean, obviously they want to lock it in place as a purpose for like making it extremely like earthquake proof and things like this. But this is sort of beyond that, really. This this goes to a different level of uh, complication. And, I, uh, I have no idea what Muhammad found there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I think it's a, I think it might be a mummified ritual object or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it's always puzzled me. Same oh, footage. Is, this is from a few years ago. You're saying there was ago. a statue alcove up there? Is that what the idea, that's the mainstream idea? Well, I think uh, this one down here, the, the, what we're looking at now, the pit, um, the, the pit is um, where they found the larger, uh, is that where they found the larger Caffrey statue? Um, Huffer enthroned one, or whatever, yeah. I think, yeah, I think the that's one that's the, That's the one on display. It's diorite as well. That's even harder than the granite. It's crazy. And that's actually on, that's on display in the main museum in Cairo. And that's the one with the beautiful kind of falcon on the back of the head. Yeah. Um, With with ridiculous detail. I mean, I've had Youssef uh, and Jim Vieira, who's a stonemason as well, looking at that and just going, what? Yeah. You know, because, so, so, you know, even if this wasn't built by Cafre, which is one of the theories, it's actually Mm. earlier structure potentially, still, they had that high technology going back through all the different eras of um, uh, Egypt. It wasn't just the super ancient. Right up in even to Ptolemaic times, they somehow passed this from generation to generation and were able to do this. That's why it's so hard, I think, to date this kind of stuff. Although, again, Robert Temple has done some interesting dating. He's actually he did, done some thermo, was it thermo, thermo luminescence dating. Thermo luminescence. And he's got some, he did it with some granite on the third pyramid and also near the valley temple and he was getting data that was at least 500 to 700 years older than hmm. this which i believe yep. is around 2600 bc so it's going into 3000 bc and beyond yeah. um but anyway look this is this is the main part of the temple here this is um absolutely mind-blowing yeah it is there's there's and and the floor is alabaster we mentioned that it's the uh it's the white calcite or um uh, yeah then we have this we have these spot, the these these are odd. I mean, you get yeah. these darker blocks here. Just I think that's is that a diorite artist- or basalt? Is that like an artistic thing? Is that something they chose, or was it all that was available? It doesn't seem like that's that later option is correct. But yeah. um, what is going on there? Yeah, it's it's that it's that real famous stone. I think it's either diorite or basalt, but it's it seems out of place with all of the red granite. So you, you have kind of the white floor, the red granite. Uh, of most of the stone, you have these these main pillars, and then you have a couple of uh, a couple of either either diorite or basalt stones. Either way, you, you're talking something that's on par, if not harder, than granite itself. Uh, you mentioned Kufra and Throne too. Even that statue, which is probably one of the finest works, people have been marveling about that statue. 
I mean, back when they discovered, ever since they discovered it, you had mason, stone masons going, scratching their head, looking at it, going, no idea how to work this material like this. And you, if you look at, again, take a close look at that in the museum, look at the glyphs on it. The glyphs are clearly handmade and chiseled as opposed to the statue itself. So, you know, there's, I think there's a strong chance the glyphs came later. Are we uh, seeing the water level here with the roughness of the lower parts of the pillars and then it getting smoother yeah. higher? You do get water. Yeah, there was definitely water in here. Yeah, you yeah. can when you're in there, it's about what three, four feet high, something yeah. like that. And it's the whole place. You can tell it had water in it, yeah. and it was controlled. It was moved through. And they said that you know one of the theories is that there were ceremonies in there, mm. um, going in through the Sphinx, through out the other side of the temple, and all this kind of stuff. All these different things that ancient yeah. Egyptians used to get up to. And uh, and the alabaster floor, alabaster is quite soft. You know, it's not a hard stone or anything. Mm. And one of the one one suggestion like there's lots of different ideas and this and that was actually added later that was actually a later By the, reconstruction but it's not it's not clear it's, it's not clear if that's correct or not the, um, the, there are some alabaster blocks in in the construction here when you look in the side doors which we'll get up to there's there's actually some of the wall is made of big alabaster blocks as well okay yeah um, but this construction style looks a lot like the Osirian yep you know i mean yes. which has water in it right yes. yeah yeah and, and there, and remember also that there was probably a second level to this as well, and a roof. So it was all covered. But over. yeah, it's like it's almost as though they had the same function. I mean, it's got yeah, the, the pillars, the same. It's very similar in more ways than just like the the laying of the stone or the type of stone. Yeah. You know, it is. And I don't think these are the only two places either, because I've got a couple pictures of a site that if you if you kind of after we look at this, we'll look at that and and see if you can guess which site it is. Uh, but it's. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's. I think that the, this type of thing, if it was functional, had something to do with water, perhaps. There's this may have been replicated in a few places. Certainly, it's, there's a connection with this and the Assyrian. I mean, they look very, they feel very similar. So you walk, so you're walking up the passage now. This is like going up to, upwards to the Sphinx. Sphinx. It's worth note, worth noting here that these walls are often or very closely mirrored again. Yeah. Um, with these side chambers as well, and also if you look at some of the angle on some of the stones as they go up. Um, they refer back to the golden section kind of yep. geometric principle and yeah, they kind they of do. they kind of fit back in and a lot there's a lot of that going on here constantly um you just don't see it unless you kind of you know try yeah. and do that kind of thing i've just i've just i, mean, I follow following the work of people like robert temple he points all these geometric aspects out um and you just yeah, here's one of one of the chambers on the right hand side I think yeah and it, all alabaster so these blocks in here it's all alabaster there's a granite floor, uh, and, mm. and in fact, and you see it more clearly on the other side, but these are white alabaster blocks that, that go around the corner. And as far as Yusuf, I've asked him a couple times, actually, he's never been in here, and he's never seen these doors open. Uh, and every time I go here, I stick stick my camera in, and I have a good look, but they go in and around the corner, and I don't know where. Uh, oh. But you have these beautiful polygons. So you can see the contrast with the granite and the roof. But yeah, this is all alabaster blocks, uh, and you see the same thing on the other side. I think the bottom layer might be might be uh, granite on the other side, but then you have alabaster in here as well. Yeah. Yeah, that makes me suspicious. Right. They're locked yeah. and never open. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Yusuf's <laughs> been there his whole life, and he's said he's he's never been in. This is one spot he's not ever been in. Yeah. Oh, that's that's, that's where they put the stools. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah, that's the the nightly cleanup crew. You just got to find the janitor, man. But you mentioned the roof as well, Ben. Um, that's one thing that I've, I've I've always wanted to get on the roof of that place. But yes. Robert yeah. Temple again, I keep mentioning he's been up there and he's got yeah. some really good shots in his book and on his website. That looking at that, oh yeah, and this is one of the door jams, right? Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. where they would have had like, would they have had like a granite door or would that have been just a wooden, wooden door? door. Wow. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, but from from up on top, so it does see what what he thinks is he thinks there were all these long pillars going over the roof, yeah, and there were there were many of them would be closely put together. You know, she couldn't fit a credit card between them, but then yep. there'd be gaps, and then there'd be another section of these. So he believes there was certain light coming in, right, and and that may represent uh, maybe an astronomical. They may have been using it as an, a, a solar temple to observe. Mm -hmm shadow effects as they move through the sky around the year so it would illuminate certain things within the temple and give clues you know to like um, to the initiates who understood this so there may have been um 
a shadow. It's same with the same with the Great Pyramid. Like you know, because technically it has eight sides, and around That's the right. equinox, one of the sides you can see one side, one of the faces, half of its shadow, half of its light, just for a few seconds, and it changes. A bit like you get you know the same thing at Chichen Itza on the equinox. Which That's right, just... with the snake, uh, the snake yeah. on the side. So I yeah. think there's something to do with that because I find like any of any of these massive polygonal sites like Sacsayhuaman, all these nubs, um, protrusions, and other things, they may have had some astronomical or solar shadow function. I agree. Where they were recording very important times of year, it could have been for agriculture, it could have been for much, something much more esoteric, it yeah. could have been much more cosmic, and even like you, you know they were so obsessed by geometry and mathematics there may be codes throughout this whole kind of um design you know every single angle length um orientation are something more than we realize and so there's still these different aspects that these uh, these brilliant people were uh, building into their sites there is a yeah. lot to it so yeah yeah and I'm, uh, I'm imagining now you were talking about you know there, there'd be places where light could come in and yeah. it would, of course, it would move during the day. And if there was water in there, too, as like reflecting pools, that would have been really beautiful. You know, like water, like shafts of light coming in, hitting water and bouncing back up onto ceilings. And yeah, just, yeah. I don't know. Keep that thought. Like, it, keep keep chatting. But I just wanted to point this out as we walk up here. Just this is probably the, one of the best examples of something that you mentioned earlier. Okay. Look yeah. at the left side and the right side walls. Look at the shapes in the walls. And you have that mirror, that matched shapes, uh, kind of the symmetry of the blocks. This isn't random. So look at the left and the right side of the blocks as we walk up here. But keep, yeah, I think you're right about the the functionality of these buildings and, and the the angle on astronomy uh, and using yeah. them as solar temples and marking things with light and cycles. It shows an understanding of of cycles, right? There's, I think, yeah. alignment is a, is a serious clue and to to I think either dating and then also understanding some of the sophistication of these of the original builders. I still think one of my preferred ideas right now is that the original structure was not designed for people, yeah. Yeah. but designed as uh, some sort of function. You know, yeah. um, I'm not necessarily saying a power plant or whatever, but uh, I like that idea for like the pyramid and 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 this. You know, the fact that it's been flooded. Um, trying to imagine that it having something to do with flowing water. Um, I don't know, some kind of, um, yeah, uh, I don't Got know it. if it's power I, generation or, yeah, I mean, some form of, I mean, yeah, uh, who knows, right? I think some of that answers to functionality, uh, like yeah, I said, a functional a times, lay outside of our perspective, of some kind. but yeah, it's, that it, I think you're right. I think originally some, some function was attached to these things, <laughs> these Korean girls. Um, yeah, and then, and then, you know, it's. It's easy to imagine people coming later and um, it becoming something more uh, for people, right? Like the yeah. uh, re religious ideas or ceremonies being built around these sites, um, honoring the, you know, the old ones. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you have a mix. There's a to me, my picture of it is 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 something along the lines of there's 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 a mix of functional and then what's clearly representational and, and ceremonial or artwork. I mean, so these, the statues are like that. Like there's a, right. a representation of that culture that is embodied in those, in statues, which I think are also older than the dynastic Egyptian civilization. But I think you're, what we know as a dynastic Egyptian civilization starting in that old kingdom, I think were, were, were had a, a strong understanding or they were connected. I mean, that's what they said as well. They said that they were connected to uh, their ancestors. They called themselves a legacy culture you know, you had the the Shemsu Hor, the followers of Horus and Zep Tepi, and it goes back forty thousand years or whatever. Uh, and I think they, I think that's a lot of what happened. That they, along the lines, lost the ability to to in, to activate or to uh, to understand the functionality or use any of that. So these places became ceremonial. They became yep. important and sacred and religious, and they were built on and they were worked up and they the ceremonies and you know most of the things that we ascribe them as today as being like temples and stuff i'm sure that's what they were used for we we have evidence of that but i think in a lot of cases the the objects themselves and some of the structures were were inherited and that wasn't their original purpose mm -hmm. uh you know in much the same way as today we use them you know we we now use them as tourist attractions and we find them sacred yeah. and we all go Service there it's 
yeah, we, we're yeah. we're inheriting and reusing. I think it's the same. We just we're just not the first ones to do it. Uh, yeah, it may be. I mean, one of the things that you know you you mentioned is um, if you get, if we look at the Assyrian, you know, which we're going to jump to shortly, it's yeah. um, there's a whole kind of almost like a procession that can be carried out in honor of Osiris there. Yeah. Well, that's one of the purposes they, this is all be written about by various different authors. Um, and the similar function may have been the Osiris shaft also on the Giza plateau, incidentally, which is linked with this because it's, uh, it's on the same causeway. It's just mm -hmm. off the same causeway from yep. middle pyramid down to the temple here. And, and they think that may have been, you know, it was certainly whether that was the original thing, we don't know, but it was certainly u potentially used, used as yeah. this sort of resurrection of Osiris ceremony, going down there and doing all these things and yeah. put yourself in danger and so forth. And so potentially there's, I think, I think it was Robert Temple again, who actually thinks there was some ceremonial aspect of the water and sailing through the Valley Temple, right? you know, either to or from the Sphinx, uh, and then back to the second mm. pyramid That's as cool. part of this process. So it's all, again, this is like, what do we know? I mean, we're just, you know, we're trying to put together the mythology with what we can yeah. see before what right. is available to see now. So it's hard to gauge what's really going on. But yeah. with the precision you're finding here, it's just, it's so precise. And this is goes yeah. back to the ancient technology idea that um, it, it's, it, it, to be that precise, it, it's more like a machine. It's more like, um, a functional kind of technology mm -hmm. rather than it is a temple because you know churches aren't built to that kind of level of sophistication or or, or chapels and things right. like this or shrines Coffins. and so you know i think there's you know i think everything you just mentioned previously you know yeah. echoes that yeah and also the you know when there's ceremonies and stuff uh a lot of times they have hidden clues as to what the original function of the thing was, yeah, you know, because there's a memory uh, in some way that was passed down. And so the ceremony can sometimes mimic, you know, what the original mm -hmm. function was. So um, we do it today. I don't right? know. It's a yeah. very cool puzzle, but we are way past uh, our first break. Say, yeah, we weren't yeah. watching the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you guys. But yeah. yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, good. All right. We'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Brothers of the Serpent here with Hugh Newman and Ben from Uncharted X. And we're going to go back through what we just went through because it was a lot. Yeah, it uh, was. We got different footage. Yeah, we got different footage from a different time. So yep. This is, this is, there, I think this is mostly all footage from last year. So fresh. The, a lot of that footage of the walk through the inside of the uh, the temple was, I think, 2016 era. And this is, this is uh, you know four years later uh in late 2020 it's a similar area so this is that entrance way with those blocks that go around the corner and again it's it's i think a lot of these uh these, these surfaces while they're rough today i think they were originally flat and smooth uh if not polished and there's a few a few examples here and there of of those surfaces but and you can obviously see that something's happened to the surface of the stone but um yeah uh, it's unfortunate we don't have those flat surfaces to test with you know surface roughness meters and some of the new gadgetry yeah, and you're and you guys are right. Both you and and Hugh have pointed out, and I'm no, I'm starting to notice now, watching more video, that there are patterns that recur mm -hmm. in the in the way the walls are made. Even though they're, it's not, it's not completely recurring. Right. There's always right. something different, but there's there's like an artistic kind of choice yeah. they're kind of like, playing with, isn't there? And, and I love, better. I yeah. love that because it's like um, it's it, to me it's like really abstract it's like abstract thought abstract artistic kind of ideas are being placed within these temples or these yeah. whatever they were uh, they're not just constructing they're like artistically designing and playing really with it yes. and uh, one of the other things you, you'll notice as well um uh, maybe we'll get, get to see some of this is there are natural kind of um in the granite there's natural kind of striations like mm. seams or streams, whatever they call it, in the granite, and, they, and, that, and, and, that, and they, they, I think, have been chosen artistically about where they go. Um, something me and Andrew discussed a lot when we were in the Valley Temple, Andrew Collins, yeah. that is, um, and we just like kept spotting that. We saw that at the Assyrian as well. Um, 
and I, I, I jump in if I see one uh, as you move the camera to the various parts of the site. But yeah, um, I know there were a few in here, and they're odd. They kind of wait where they're placed and where, why they were chosen. Right. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. There's also a stone in here. Uh, I'm sure we'll get to it in a minute at the end of uh, the main corridor as you come through the main door there. I think we're heading down there now. At the end, I think it's like got what fifteen sides or something. What, what, one of the right. stones. We'll get that. You see one of them seam streams there, just on that. That's that. And you see another one here above the black stone. Above the black stone, yeah, that's a yeah, good yeah. big occlusion. Yeah, so there's quite a few there. of those, and they're like really strangely placed. They're not just random. I don't think. I think that was part of the kind of art design. Yeah. And just like the- uh, re- go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, re- reminder that the, the footage is like, it's just my raw footage. So apologies if I am thrashing around with the camera. I think we were we were doing a lot of talking while I was filming. No worries. No, that's no, great. It's great. Uh, I was just going to say, it's like the, the, the cool thing about the patterns is it's like they're illustrating symmetry, but more in the way that nature does it, where you can tell right. that there's a pattern, say, in the in the leaves of a flower. But from one flower to the next they're all different even though you can tell like okay this is the same you know fundamental pattern coming out yeah Yeah. it's never perfect and that's kind of what it does like you'll you'll see this pattern over here in the joints of the of the stone and the other one on the other side but they're not exact it's recognizable but not exactly the same yeah Yeah. right like nature right yeah Yeah. these these pillars in the center are just massive although the ones at the assyrian are even even larger and it's probably worth noting that some of these have been stood up again. Like this was uh, this place was originally when I think Vice was one of the first guys that explored it. He actually blew up a couple of these with dynamite to get them out of the way to to shift them rather than try to pick them up. So he's, he's he did destroy a couple of these main columns um, that have now been put back up. So man, dynamite is the last thing I would imagine yeah. thinking of if I found this place. Like, hey, <laughs> let's. Get- Let's stuff some dynamite over here. And yeah, right. I don't know. Fair few of them used it. Well, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, Petrie kind of critis- chided them for it with their, the energetic blasters, I think he called them, of, of yeah. you know, the previous era where they would, well, we can't get through here. Let's just blow it up and see what happens. Like Mariette was another guy. They, they definitely were, uh, you know. They, they, <laughs> we're looking at these alcoves in the floor. Sorry, Ben, but mm. uh, before the camera moves. Yep. Are they... Uh, cut out or is this actually tiled in and are the wall stones going below because it looks like some of the stones on the wall are sitting on top of that floor but then they go down into those alcoves uh, let me we've got a little look at one here let's have a look uh, my there you go so yeah I I, uh, I think they're um, I think the stones go down below the wall stones go be- yeah. below them yeah and then these have been tiled in afterwards would okay. be my I think that's right. I mean, because yeah. you get the, the alabaster appears. It looks like it's been added later. That's what it appears like anyway, but you never yeah. know. But, I mean, and I get a feeling some of the stones uh, may fold into the floor level as well, but we don't see oh, wow. that. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I mean, because you're getting that in the corners. Yeah, that, uh, yeah you get them and you this get, way and you, too. Pro- you probably had that on parts of the, the ceiling area as well. Um, if you get on top, you can sort of see strange elements. And this stone here, just on the top part of this shot, is one of the biggest ones in there i think and that's got that's yeah, got giant polygonal features um and that this one again is mirrored on the other side almost yeah. identically it's uh, yeah. exactly mm. the same size so uh, sorry go ahead no that's no, okay no i was just pointing that out and uh um massive yeah i mean the further you get down this you start seeing more of this mirroring that kind of gets kind of intense because some of the stones get smaller as well at this end so, yes and they're still mirroring as you go down even further, um, but it, it's just it's it's utterly remarkable, really, when you start, start thinking. And about. it's the, the and, other... and look at the angle on that as well. There's little angles, oh, yeah. little angles off the vertical kind of yeah, yeah that one there. And they have a lot, have a lot of that going on, and then you get a little kind of polygonal polygonal corner on it, and things like this. Yep. I mean, angles, why yeah. do that? I mean, it's just yeah. it makes everything so difficult. I mean, it sure does. Just, just makes it just trying to make it difficult for themselves. Maybe it was a <laughs> test. It was like part of the initiation, like you do this or you, you die or something. Um, <laughs> you do, it, do it properly. Yeah, or, or you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we're also seeing the limestone way up above, like yeah. 
happens. What's what's going on there? Well, there was there was another level likely to this whole structure. It was there was certainly a roof on top, if not another whole level on top of this. And the the granite, the, the limestone goes up another up up again. So you, you may have right. been dealing with with multiple like actual levels to it. And it's and it's like we're discussing this interior structure, but it's clearly the second stage mm. of this original building, right? Like yep. you're in here, but we can't even see what because uh, this stuff was cased around even on the inside that original much more that's right limestone, right so. you, you can see i just saw then a second ago on the top of the wall um you can actually see sort of gaps where stones would have been like lintels going across above the current lintels as mm. well so there would have been another roof over the top of the lintels on top of the upright so yeah um and that's what um some of the early descriptions talk about some of the antiquarian images and like you said the the giant uh, limestone goes even higher. I mean, it's like yeah. the, the uh, you know on the outside. So, I mean, what was that originally? I mean, what, right. what was the structure there originally? I mean, and what would that have looked like? It, you know, that combined with the Sphinx Temple next door, it, it would have been absolutely mind blowing. And how old was it be, be, to get this eroded? I'm not like you deliberately, you know, like found pieces of limestone that were eroded and you sort of decided to build it out of that. Like it's it was pretty clearly made with cut blocks of limestone that have subsequently eroded and then been cased in granite and then they still attribute the whole damn thing to the what the the fourth dynasty so it, you know the very beginnings of uh dynastic egyptian culture as we know it which it just doesn't make it doesn't make any sense it's part of the whole contradiction yeah. of the old kingdom in general like you, you can't you know how do you case something that's already ancient in granite and then the whole thing apparently was all built, just built in the in the fourth dynasty for one for one pharaoh right this, this stone here on the right, um, the cornerstone of that door, I think it's the one on the right at the bottom there, that is that is, that is a, one of the strangest stones uh, I think I've seen in Egypt where it's like got something like, how many sides has that got bent? It's like, was it yeah, 18 tons. or 17 or something? And, and it bends around, the hole goes through the whole door and joins up with the other wall. Let me back so up the a amount, bit. Like, the amount of corners and bends in one block, I mean, just to, just to choose to do that, it's yeah, just, that one there. Yeah, and yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, I forget how many sides and corners and other mm. things there are with that, but unless you look carefully, you just, people just walk past it and don't notice that. Yeah, there's it's there's a there's a there's a, it reminds me of a stone that's in the um, the Corricantia in uh, in Cusco that that does the same thing. It goes, it just has all these angles, and it's the same sort of polygonal masonry. But there's one stone that did sort of goes all the way around a, a, an inset doorway, and it's the one piece that that travels all those corners. Uh, and the, you know you've got the same thing at the at the Inca Roca walls, the fifth is so-called the I think it's the twelve angle stone. There's one big piece of granite that's got twelve faces to it that are shaped with all of its neighbors, and you know those are even crazier because they're curved; they're not all straight sort of shapes. Uh, you can get it. Look at the alabaster on the floor here. Yeah, do they do they know the source of all the like you know the red granite the the limestone blocks I guess came from the Sphinx enclosure but yeah uh, and then where does the alabaster come from do they know all this have they figured this out uh, well so alabaster this white calcites it's a spring stone you have to get it it's like it forms it next to natural springs so it's you have to dig it up out and sort of for big blocks like this it has to be deep in the ground like close to the source of the spring apparently. Uh, according to Yusuf, from what I understand, I don't know if they have the specific source for the alabaster or not, but it has to be, there's only like a few places where you can get it in, in, in quality like is used here. Yeah, I think it forms uh, in caves too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and then of course they, they attribute most of the uh, the red granite, the pink granite to Aswan, which is a uh, thousand kilometers, five, six hundred miles away. Uh, and you, you know, these are, and, it's a f even as much granite as we're looking at here. We know it's a tiny fraction of the amount of granite that was shipped up here, because again, they, they say it's first couple courses of the uh, the second pyramid cased in granite. There's right. granite up and down this place. Like oh, the 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 temple, the structure in in front of the uh, the pyramid itself was all cased in granite. Much like, and it would have looked. I think it was all the same sort of work. You just most of it got quarried and knocked down, and for whatever reason, this this was buried in sand and somehow preserved. But you know, as beautiful as the Valley Temple is, I think it's just one of many structures that were made like this. And this is that same alabaster walls on the inside, if my camera ever focuses. Uh, same sort of thing. Really odd that... It, yeah, it's focusing on the bar, yeah. Really odd that that, that uh, 
that they, this these weird in channels and passages off to the side have these alabaster walls. I, I yeah. um, again, why? It's it's kind of like that black diorite or basalt block. You know, what? Why the change? Why the shift? Yeah. Is it? So was there a the, reason? What's up with the floor there? The ramp is like made of wood. So do you guys know? Yeah. What the- what it looks like was it stairs or was it a ramp i or, don't know like why did they floor it with modern wood i don't is know it, uh, is treacherous well, they moved the stool as, as far as i'm aware the um <clears throat> regardless the, the slope i think it was just a slope i don't think there were steps on it i mean as far okay. as I, I remember reading robert temple's book again and the slope is very much to do with the the geomet- geometrics, the, the the golden section angles, mm. and they were very much following those principles in virtually everything uh, they were doing here. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was like the walls were bending around underneath. But I could be wrong. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, just in that real quick shot there, it looked like the uh, the hinges were on both sides of that opening. Did you see that? Yeah, I think they are. I believe those so holes like are a, in both sides, yes. Like a double door or a locking door, I guess. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So then we pop out and have a look at the, the Sphinx, which we did see a little of before. So, But what I wanted to do is maybe we move on to some images here that I have. A couple of pictures, and Hugh, you probably recognize this side, or guess, but I, I think that you're looking at, in, 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 in this side in question, as we just flip through these, it's another uh, supposed old kingdom site. It's one that not that many people get to see. But I think you're just looking at the remnants of something that could have been like this. I think this probably existed on a number of sites and even maybe a number of places at Giza. But you know, you've, you, it's another place that has these big limestone blocks, huge lumps of granite laying around, uh, mostly all been quarried. Uh, which is the one that I, I, I was looking through my pictures and I was like, man, it's just like this is what that 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 temple might look like had it all been just knocked down and quarried and 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 removed in the same way that you know so many other sites have had and that you know maybe if it wasn't covered in sand and preserved or at least partially preserved for us to see today, you might see something like this is is all you'd have left. So it's 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 a good example of kind of the clues like this. This is a good shot of it here. Um, you know, giant blocks of granite. Huge blocks of limestone. Man, yeah, it's an, another. Yeah, any right. it, any clue? Some any the shots, some of the other shots you showed, you could see that the limestone walls have like slumped. Um, yeah, yeah. Wow. Any guesses? <laughs> no, I don't think I've been. Is this Abu? It's not Abu Rawash, is it? Yeah, it is. Yep. You yeah, got it. Yeah, because yeah. oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah you've got the, it's almost like it's almost like a pyramid without a pyramid, isn't it? Um, it is. Yeah, it's like with the hollow. <laughs> section Huge right interior there's a couple of stones there as well i remember seeing <clears throat> I've, I've visited there twice i think and I've, there's one of them has got this beautiful curvature on it a bit like you find one of the outer stones on right. the um uh the valley temple. valley temple that's that's actually one that chris dunn looked at i think as well that's that's this stone here yeah yeah and this um, one here. <clears throat> and just the, the size of the machine <laughs> to, yes that would have had to carve that would have been so big it, it would, it's unthinkable you know how they could have done that yeah. but Abu Ruash is an odd one because it's like a huge pit but it is and then, and then there's there's no pyramid there as such even though there there may have been it might have all what? been quarried away so um, I, the, I, th- I think I think there was I just from the the sheer amount of uh, of rubble and this is like I know this is like Chuck doesn't think this was a pyramid and he thinks that there was a number of uh, Chuck from CF apps there was a number of sites that weren't, and it, there's, it definitely bears similarities to Zaywat El Aran. There's other great pits just like it, but when you look at, I think, I think it mostly the structure was quarried. I think there was a lot. There's so much. There, are, there is the the berms of nothing but chip rubble. Like you're talking, you know, like like 30, 40 feet high, massive berms of nothing but just quarry offcuts, little chips, all limestone, like all quarry rubble like quarry rubbish there's there is so much of that around this site i think it was just this was the quarry for millennia i think people were just taking stone from here forever and whatever it was whether it's a pyramid or not i think there was just a massive structure there originally and something else going on there but yeah today it's it's like this giant open pit uh not to divert away from it but it's just, it's just like i think it's quite possible my point was kind of like i think there was there was just like we have with the valley temple we've there's there's a stack of sites that that probably had work like that on them, and we just don't have much left of it anymore today. I think there's 
you just have the tiniest of clues, which makes it such a difficult kind of space to try and actually say what was going on. But you know, that's that's when I look at and see some of the stones and the big granite blocks that you do see on these places, and then you know might even have a couple of these on various sites. I think originally you could have had structures as big as the Valley Temple on these places as well, all from granite. Yeah, and that's interesting because I mean, if it wasn't a pyramid, but it was more like the valley temple for example does that hint that the valley temple itself may have gigantic open spaces deep beneath it like this does could be yeah i think this could have just been the structure next to the pyramid that was here you know even though today you just look at a mound of limestone and some granite and this giant pit in the ground uh you know this 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 is similar to even this what's beneath the step pyramid although that's even grander and that's just a a straight pit you've got zayrat el aran which um is is very similar to abu rawash and then there's a number of other py- ancient like pyramid sites that aren't very well documented that also have these underground structures that also have typically like granite in the bottom of them. I mean, Zaywat Al Aran looks like this, but they found they that was found with it wasn't quarried like they found granite blocks and a granite yeah. coffer and it was tiled. it's an incredible story. Yeah, tiled with granite and I think, same you, think, thing. I think you get that um, at Hawara as well with the yep. so-called labyrinth. There's a whole load Huge. of granite deep under it there, and you, we actually got we got to granite walk down the underneath the pyramid up to a certain point, but it was flooded with water. You yeah, see, you can see the beautiful kind of passageway was just precision yeah. engineered. Um, so yeah, so oh, there's so many of these sites on top they're ruined, underneath. It's barely been you know, some of them are flooded out so you can't even get down to them but yeah. i think that's why i think that's what i think actual like sand and rubble kind of saved the valley temple and saved the it assyria did. you know yep. kind of preserved it in a way uh, I mean, this... for future generations to actually appreciate yeah it, it escaped to the quarrying um yeah yeah and i, th- I think you, you look at in a lot of cases you, not everywhere like giza and and some of these sites you have you, you have a very complex and and i think builder structures on top of the ground but i think in some places like hawar is an example where you have something more complicated and, and high-tech sort of underground that then like a, that whole adobe mud brick pyramid i think was probably dynastic like they probably built that over the top of it much like i think the step pyramid was probably built by the dynastics over the top of something that was pre-existing at Saqqara. but yeah i mean hawar is such an incredible spot i mean if you ever read if you want an interesting story look up what petrie wrote about it and i think it's hawara uh, he has a book. He has a couple on Hawara, but his when he first found what's down there, there's like a, it's like a, a hundred ton block of yellow calcite, some yellow crystal. It's almost like a, a a box inside this crystal box room that's beneath it. That's this giant structure, and he could he could it was still flooded in his time. He could barely get down and document it. Um, but then the water table, it's still down there, but the water table rose, and uh, he you can't get down there anymore. Like he's his story of what's down there and what 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 he found in there is really interesting and it's something I, I'm I'm going to dig into it in some mm. point doing a video but yeah some incredible unique stuff down there just like I'd love to eventually have have someone get in there and take pictures of that box that's down there because apparently it's 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 one of the most incredible boxes in all of Egypt. Mm. Um, anyway, not not to divert too far from these, but I just I was kind of making the point that I think these structures like the Assyrian and the Valley Temple probably existed. Uh, at a number of these sites, and, and anyway, so let's let's move on to the Assyrian, and and I'll um we can keep chatting, but I'll let this video roll just to set it up. So this this does include a little bit of the walk through the temple that leads up to it. This is a dynastic right. temple. I think it's Seti the first, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that that as they were building, it's almost like they had to turn it to the right a bit once they found the Assyrian, which sits at a different level. And so we'll see that as we we kind of roll through this. Um, it is a beautiful uh, temple as well, a beautiful work. This has oh. got some interesting features just within this part, hasn't it? As well, it does so, yeah. And uh, but there's they got the king's list on this as well, which yep. uh, goes way, way back, a it long, does. long way back. Um, and uh, that that's an unusual thing in its own right. Um, Indeed. And also, um, what was the other thing that kind of grabbed my attention? It was quite a few bits and pieces actually, but yeah, like you say, it's, it was built. This was built like before it appears to have been built. What was it around 12, 1200 BC, mm-hmm. something like 12, 1250, something like this? Uh, Seti reigned for like what 60 odd years and mm-hmm. he um, built it. And then he appeared to have, if, if you know, one of the theories he fe- then found the Assyrian, right. and that was oriented completely differently. And that, and you don't have temples together oriented differently 
in Egypt. It is not not a done thing in any any era. And so, yes. so 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 either he's playing with us and messing with our minds, and he did it deliberately against the orientation of the Assyrian, or he did actually find it later, mm -hmm. um, and he built it in honor of Osiris, maybe in honor of the earlier epoch from the Giza plateau. Uh, that's why that's the kind of it's kind of one of the one of the traditional theories is that the Assyrian. I think we're walking through. No, we're not through the king's list. We just went past it a minute ago. Oh, sorry, yeah, I missed we, that. We I was did. just yapping away. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. and um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So there's different ideas, but one one of the traditional theories which most people believe the academics are, is that he built it in honor of Osiris, based upon the principles of the Babi Temple and so forth. Right. Um, but there's so many things in here we're going to get into in a minute. But yeah, this is yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 almost as if the temple kind of dog legs a little to the right too. Like I I think there's a it, it seems pretty, you know, there's a mass and this is all sandstone versus the you know the granite of the of the Assyrian which is just here, and it's at a different it's such at a different level. I mean, clearly underground, uh, and yeah, you don't pop them together right quite like that. Yeah, it seems yeah, it a, seems there's a, there's a whole passageway that kind of comes down uh, from the surface or from the back end of. Seti the first temple is sort of to the left of this, uh, then comes through, then changes direction for it. That eventually, cut, it goes down on a slope, then comes into the Assyrian. But we'll, we'll yeah. see. We'll see aspects of that uh, in the video. Seti, yes. Um, was Seti the father of Ramses? Yes. I got that right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. The, I because I kind of remember 19th. reading that he he didn't quite finish that temple either, and so Ramses, Ramses finished it off. Put his name right? on it. Yep. Yeah, his name on it. Yeah. Same thing with Karnak, right? That was Ramses and Seti. Uh, yeah. Luxor as well. Um, the the 19th Dynasty was a big one. He he definitely was a powerful king. I mean, Ra I've got my Ram issues with Ramses, but I just right. think that him and Mer Menkara, I think, was... Uh, no, who was his son? It wasn't Menkara. It was um, Meren Patar, I think, uh, was his son. And they all were just notorious for stealing... Um, the ancient, more ancient work. They just would. They they start. I don't know who started the trend. I mean, it's been going on that rewriting trend, and overwriting yeah. other people's names. It's been going on for a while, but those guys took it to like a new level. Like that. That's and today we kind of everyone thinks that and we make movies about him, right? Ramses, the the greatest king of of all yeah. Egypt, and it's. I think in, in in a lot of cases it's just he he got to write his name on some of the greatest achievements of each of of that culture and just. I mean, he did work. I'm sure, and he was a very powerful king. They did a lot during his time, but I, you, I just, you can't attribute everything to him just because he put his name on it. Because there's direct evidence that shows he, he was only the last guy to write his name on it. I mean, Petrie gets yeah. into this in detail. It's not even, it's not a, it's not a. There's not a lot of debate about it. Like we know that's what happened, but it's just sort of gets. No, no, that's Ramses. That's obviously of Ramses. Right. Yeah. And we have him. I mean, that's the other thing too. I saw this on Twitter. Someone did a good job. Like we have his body, and his mummy. And so we can, there's done, there's like facial reconstruction been done on his, the bone structure and what he looked like. And it's, mm. it's like not even remotely close to what we would associate and call a Ramsey's face. Like it, there's nothing, it's, it's realms like of, yeah, the statues, which are all apparently of him, but they don't look anything like him. They're all, they're all, they're all as you know, from Chris Dunn's research, they're all geometric, they're all symmetrical, Perfect. they're all yeah. like precision, all down with all different, uh, golden section principles but anyway this is the Assyrian. yeah wow. god this is bringing very nice memories. I've, these... been, yeah, I've, been, I've been down here twice got inside it twice before so i'm quite for a long time though as you yeah. know ben it was it was you couldn't go in it because of the water right. level but it's kind of reduced it's gone down further it um, but all this would have had like a ceiling much like um the valley temple um the floor slabs are ridiculous. There's all these nubs. You can even see nubs in the lower kind of pits. Yep. Uh, and yeah, there's there's a lot to say. I mean, and there's also do you, do you get to see any of the keystone cuts in this footage? Yes. Yep. We'll get to some of those. Yep. For because sure. um, one of the it? one of the aspects with the keystone cuts, which is interesting, I'll just throw this in now quickly, yeah, um, is the seti put wooden keystone cuts in. Yeah. Uh, carved his name on them. But did he, did, you know, so that's why they think, oh, says he must have built it. You know, it's what the, there's one actually in the Ashmolean Museum in, in Oxford, in England. And and so people think, oh, he built it then. But did he just put them in there himself? Because right. if you put wood in, pour water on it, it expands. And it kind of 
it's keystone cut. It's not going to hold anything together like hundred ton blocks. Mm. But you know, were there metal cuts in there before? There were metal clamps in there before, yeah. like we find at Tiwanaku, for instance. But we can discuss that when we see some more. But I just wanted to. Yeah. Uh, that kind of grabbed my attention when I, I was there. And I've been to the Ashmolean beforehand. Mm-hmm. Oh God, look at this! This is megalithic heaven. Wow. Isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible. I need like 70, 80 tons, these big central cent- center blocks, massive um, chunks of granite. And they've got elements of a uh, polygonal sort of puffiness as well. You get this, uh, yep. you not only get, you get the nubs on them as well, these sort of kind of like computer keyboard buttons, like you get Oyente Tambo yep, and all, all that back all places. There. And then you've got this around the edge anyway, not in the main pillars and lintels, you've got this sort of, slightly puffy pillow like just very slightly you can see it there you can see like mm-hmm. the little kind of striations and little scoops mm-hmm. yep. you know this is all this is, you've got a good good light on this actually this is a good yeah. um, time of day uh, you do not want to step in that stuff. Yes, the uh, green. Get the like the one, green one, is really vibrant. Yeah, <laughs> yes, vibrant is the I'm word. Yeah. Mysterious. One of our guys stepped in it accidentally oh, and God, he went stinky. down to his waist almost. Yeah, it's pretty well, rough. It does go down like 11, 12 feet from there. There's yeah. there is there is plenty more structure beneath this that's in the water. So when they found this in in modern times, was it? Was it just completely buried in sand, or was there rubble? Or was but, it was it rock and sand, or what? It's both. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of rubble, a lot of clearing out had to be done. Um, there's a lot of work actually. I, I've got I've got all the old photos. I've been collecting them for years. Mm-hmm. But um, just while we're in these rooms here, there's 17 of these rooms all yeah. around uh, the whole the whole kind of main uh, sort of rectangular complex, um, and then you have the corridor which goes at two or three angles heading out of the site. Um, and so this How is big are these rooms uh, it's 12 big. feet, 12 something feet, like something that. like that, 15, yeah. something like that. They're not, they're not huge, you have to duck down to go in them. Yeah, um, but you can see the cornering here as well. And you've got the uh, the drill holes for the doors. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I mean, this is to me, to me, this is more impressive than the valley temple, not just because of the size, there's just something about this, yeah, which is a bit, a bit different. I mean. Yeah. A little bit different to the, the the Valley Temple. It just has this has this energy. It's odd. I, I cannot explain this. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It cannot it's, work it's, out. Work this point out. It's strange to me that anybody could think that this is the same age as the Seti Temple. Right. Above. I mean, it's this yeah. is granite and it's heavily weathered. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, it's it, it pretty it's clearly not. Really, all this, all this little um, detail, and like on the left here, you can see these little scoop marks and kind mm, of shaping. Yeah. It's like they've softened the stone. I mean, really? this is one of the weird things. You, you get that a lot in Peru, as you you, you know that Ben. Oh, yeah. You mm-hmm. guys know this, as well. but you, you get it here, this particular site. Um, and yeah. you were right. He is there at the perfect time of day, the perfect time of year to get yeah. that shadow. Get that, cast yeah, we had good light. light. Yeah, to give you all that detail. That's <laughs> awesome. And again, this could represent things. This could represent oh, the size of, this. of the sun the roof. The, you know, as it shifts around in the sky. That certain things that emerge on the walls that may be some kind of message or ritual or something like this. Um, and so, you know, it could, it could have aspects of that that could be part of the design, but you can only see it if you're an initiate right. and you know when to go there. Yeah, this is uh, my this was my first uh, time down here, only time so far. Uh, yeah, astonishing. I, this was a real goal for that trip for me to to get down in here and take a closer look at it. It's and it's just gigantic. Like just, just, these blocks are monstrous. Yeah, and so I, I've well noticed, made. I've noticed in every one of these little rooms that w- when you go in and you look in, you can see the corner blocks that make up the doorway. Yep. And there's a ceiling block, and it's got a platform on either side that the corner that it's that are sitting on the corner block so that that it's hard Mm. to describe it's like there's a there's a a projection from the ceiling block that goes down towards the corners instead of the corner block sitting directly on the you know what i'm saying it's Mm -hmm. interesting like i I think it's going around corners with blocks i think that it feels i i can't i i can't recall that if there's a limestone block in the in the roof of all of these either, like or if it's a different type of stone, there yeah, might be some like alabaster that. in there as well. But uh, there's um the, the I think the outer walls, uh, which you don't see so much of, uh, I think they're quartzite. Yeah, 
that's what I'm not sure. I think the quartz are a type of sandstone, which you get on the, mm. but you don't get that. You don't see so much of that. That's what kind of almost, it's almost like the casing around the Valley Temple of limestone. You get I think quartz or sandstone here, but yeah. you don't see as much. You see that when you I think you go up the tunnel, you see the different types of stone more. Yep, well, I'm um, going up there now. I think. Yeah, and um, but this I mean obviously there's there's the flower of life's in here. The we'll get into nine that. of them, nine or ten of them, mm -hmm. uh, which are etched or painted or something, something on them people aren't sure even how when they got on there yeah um and they're very high up some of them um so they must have how some they got up there we don't know but it's, it's it's just bizarre just on this one side here there's a couple on this side as well and here and up and, here uh, and you can and unless you go in the temple uh, you can only see two of them from steps that's right um, you, have to, you have to go in there to see all nine or ten of them so do you guys think that this structure was originally on a surface or did they build it down into the ground like this? Um, that's a good question. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I could tell you what I think and then Ben can jump in and maybe, but I, I, if, if it is older, which there's a good case for that, then that may have been the ground level it, or it may have been just yeah. below ground level. It may have been like the Valley Temple where they kind of landscaped it and yeah. then built it just below ground level perhaps. It may have been ground level at the time. If this if this is super ancient, you know, 10, right. 12,000 years ago, then maybe it was ground level because the way the sand moves around in this part of the desert, that's that's, that's certainly possible. But if SETI did build it, if we look at that as a theory, uh, then, um, and if it is in honor of Osiris, it would, would have to be underground anyway. And so that's why right. they okay. believe SETI may have definitely done it, you know, because that's part of the tradition, you know, of the, the Osiris, Kind of a story where you yeah. have to go underground to kind of carry out the ceremony and the ritual yeah yeah i i i share that uh share your views on it i don't um you know i, th I think it's i i suspect it's older uh and it definitely goes deeper so but i and i don't think this was the original level i think it was certainly parts of it were intended to be underground um whether or not the the same you know level that existed that then when they built the temple it was the same level when this was original I don't know but it does feel like certainly parts of it were meant to be uh, under the ground. Well, this and, bit I've not been into before. Is this the, this is the opposite side the opposite, to where the tunnel is? That's right. So another it's yeah. another whole room here. I think this was flooded when I was last here, so this is interesting. So, so you've got like pillar, upright pillars here as well. Are these freestanding or are these built into the wall? That, that pillar, I think it was uh, into the wall. And then you, you also have this, this A-frame kind of roof oh. in here. That's, that's similar to the other side as well, isn't it? It uh, is. You get to the, the tunnel and so forth. That is very interesting. You get this inside some of the pyramids on the Giza Plateau, this kind of um, roof design as well. Um, yeah. So, it, that, you know, so that would at least be contemporary, you know, if we look at it, age. This feels... With the, Giza Plateau, yeah. This feels very much like the um, the Kafra Pyramid, the, the chamber inside the Kafra Pyramid, which is the same sort of A-frame uh, roof to it. And then you, you mean you also have the, um, the the so-called Queen's Chamber in the main pyramid that has yeah. has a, an A-frame roof. And interestingly, there's a slope. There is the third pyramid has a has an arched, a curved roof. And then the only other place where I've seen that is at Lahoon. It's that granite chamber that's beneath the uh, Lahoon Pyramid that has that incredible precision box in it. Also has a, a curved ceiling, and that's a, like a whole chamber that's made out of out of granite. So um, these, I've not seen this is room. Room. This, this is I've not seen this one. So these yeah. these pillars here. What, what do no, you there you go, freestanding. Yeah, that one's freestanding. I I don't know. Yeah, it's it's like this. They're they're evenly spaced along the edge there. Uh, if we go back, you actually can see. Um, yeah, I think this must have been close while I was there. I did I did not see this particular spot. This yeah, it is might fascinating. Be. And just, just the, I mean, that some of the, the blocks going over the roof at this angle are ridiculously big by the looks of it. Yep. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It's quite remarkable. How long would you say this room is? It's pretty big. Um, it looks like yeah. it's 40 feet long or something. Something like that. Yeah, that's a, probably a good, uh, maybe a little longer even. Maybe longer, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say, I want to say 20 or 30 meters, so. What is this with this metric crap? <laughs> What's that? So, so 70 feet, 60 feet? <laughs> there you go. 
is something else, isn't it? Yeah, this um, place was cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're we're up on time again, guys. We're all right. We're not paying enough. To, we're, this video is so <laughs> I good. We're not I, I, I figured I figured we'd be up on time in a minute yeah. here. All right, I'll pause it here. All right, and we come back we'll from right a break. Back. This is fantastic. Right. Okay, so we're back from the break and we're checking out more of the Assyrian and uh, the footage we've got here. We're just deep within it, a private access visit. Clearly, yep. this is where you. This is where you usually get to. This is where most people kind of have to stop. You see that rope there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually a bit further up actually, and you just get the view down on it. So, to get in there now, they they actually have access you know which is brilliant i mean we, we do that on our tours you do that on your tours ben and yep. it's it's really essential i mean for the, the megalithic people with that interest or the ancient technology interest they really have to do that um, yep. i think it's one i think it's one of the most intriguing places to actually go inside of in uh, the whole of egypt I agree. Yeah. yeah. I, this was my first chance to, to get down here and definitely it'll be included on any of the future trips that uh, I do. I think it's, as you say, just essential to get down in here. And I know you're going, you're going back this year, right? You got, you got a tour in November. November. Yeah. It's postponed from last year, of course. Um, okay. and so yeah, we've got one in November. We're doing that with my buddy, Jim Vieira. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we talk a lot about the giant research, but we're, he's a stonemason. Right. He's like, you know, he's the same sort of thing as you said. They do different types of stonemasonry. So he's got this background uh, of a professional stonemason. So he goes there and he's like, whoa, you know, he kind of sees it from that perspective. So we have very much, we're looking at the, we, we love the ancient technology side of it. But Jim's a bit of a mystic as well. Uh, and I, I've kind of got that kind of thing going on. JJ is going to be with us who does cool. brilliant research on ancient symbolism. She decodes stuff as we go around sites and it kind of blows everyone away. But yeah, so yeah, we're doing a trip there in November. It's uh, a few spaces open for that. And uh, Good stuff. yeah, hopefully we can all collaborate on some giant trip one day and get like I'd love 30 that. of us hosts. <laughs> I'd love, <laughs> I'd love that. Yeah. Because it's the stuff you learn, I mean, it's like sometimes you get people on these trips who just give you the insights you were waiting for. You didn't spot something, didn't see something. And yeah. uh, it's actually quite useful to go with a bunch of people. Indeed. Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, I'm, I, I am hoping to get back to Egypt this year as well. I'm in the final throes of, of planning a, a trip. It was It's one that also been delayed and delayed a couple times. In fact, this was the original trip from last year. I've had a long wait list of people that couldn't make it because of 2020. Uh, I'm hoping that'll be in October and I'll get to announce something about that in the next uh, few next couple of weeks. I'm in the, the last phases of doing the same thing. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to get together on a, on a trip at some point and do something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. This is this, a, it, yeah. Go this ahead. Is the tunnel, isn't it? This yeah, is the kind of this is the route you've seen. You've, you've come out of the main temple and you've taken a right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you, you, this is actually a slope, uh, correct? Going upwards. Yep. If if I, I, I kind of lost track of where we were for a second, and this goes way up, and then it, it then it goes takes another corner, I think. Um, and this is all constructed, but this is a different type of construction this isn't yes. this, this isn't really great this is not granite is it this is kind of like sandstone or it is i think local, yeah local stone you can see that on the ground there um it's not granite so this is why it's thought that this was um added later and it was designed to connect to this discovery yeah. that seti and his, his group made you know right. you know 1258 bc or whatever so yeah. that's that's one of the ideas but obviously the academic Egyptologists believe this was one big design and it was actually built by Seti as part of his bring back these old traditions. So mm. the jury's out on that one. I'm with the old school. I think it's older. I think it's got this, this different orientation. Yep. There's been some research even on the archaeoastronomy of it. There's people like Freddie Silver, who's like an alternative historian. He believes that this would align precisely with Orion going back 10,500 BC, which matches the whole kind of Sphinx idea that Hancock and Breval put forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. This going back to the time of Leo and so forth. Um, and, you know, this, this, that, that, there's something in that kind of rings true with me. Um, but, you know, with so little research and dating has actually been done here is, is, is quite, it's quite startling. Yeah. And of course, these walls are beautifully, you know, uh, artwork. It's just, and some of the colors are still showing. And this is thousands of years old. Like this work is, it's beautiful, uh, actually, to get in here and look at this. And yeah, uh, clearly so is the, dynastic. Is the roof over there, overhead, uh, stone? Yes, uh, parts like of it are stone. 
this staggered pattern on that roof that they're modern, I think, modern repairs and additions of the skylights. Yeah. But yeah, it's it was a constructed tunnel. Yeah, and a lot of it was probably I, caved in. Yeah, I think a lot of the roof is being reconstructed here as well. Yeah. Okay, um, you know, so that a lot of it, I mean, a lot of it has been moved around. I mean, obviously, they're being able to move anything in the Assyrian virtually because it's just too damn heavy. <laughs> so what's uh, what's written giant. here? They telling oh. a story on the way down the hallway. Is that the idea? I haven't I haven't read an analysis of it, but yes, I'm assuming there's a number of stories being told on here. It's yeah. it's absolutely covered, um, yeah. top to tail. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, one of the one of the ideas that Andrew Collins and he talks about when he, when he came on our previous trips. Um, he's done a, a lot of research on Egypt. He's one of the top people on it, in my opinion. And he's he he thinks it's this whole elaborate ritual and story of of Osiris mm. and was played out. And so much of that was probably part of this um, route going down into the uh, underworld, you know, uh, right, duads right. and so forth. And uh, so much, much of, so even in the Assyria, much there would have been a giant megalithic roof over most of it, possibly all of it, with a, probably a few gaps, which I still believe were used as part of uh, you know, like a solar kind of light phenomena thing, lighting up certain parts of the, the site at different times of year. Um, so a lot of this would have been to do that, but this would have been a set his time. Uh, they would do, they were kind of adding this yep. to perhaps this previous temple, but adding their ideas of what they thought was, that may have been used for. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, so there's, there's a big, big mystery here. I mean, it's really unclear. I mean, I've, I've read as much as I can on this. I've talked to some top people on this academics and alternative researchers, but um this is where this is kind of where it all changes just here this is where you're going back into granite uh, going back into the Assyrian copper here yeah and just the massive granite blocks this is kind of where the real temple begins with there's all the rubble on either side too yeah yep and a lot of it's been quarried you see a lot of those dashed lines they're they're all quarry marks so this was quarried quite a lot of the blocks i mean they're still there the ones that weren't successfully quarried but yeah they've been hacking at this for a while as a as a granite quarry essentially yeah yeah, I see. I've seen the there's holes in the corners of some of these blocks too, where they were trying to, mm -hmm. where they're trying to peel pieces of it off. Yep. I yeah, just the, it that scooping pattern yeah. that is on the faces of those granite stones. I just, I don't know. I'm I'm definitely looking into the ultrasonic, using vibration to cut through that stuff. I yeah. think I think. Uh, Risky leap. I mean, because again, you got the, you got this ridiculously obvious Peruvian connection going on. Yeah, that it's scooping. Yeah. same. It's so obvious. I mean, and, and like even this is one thing a lot of people that well, I talked about this with Ben in the podcast is like even at Stonehenge, there's two or three stones that have scooping on them. Yeah. So some of them are really slight scoops, others are giant ones. That's on a, actually a recumbent flat stone on the ground, one of the fallen trilodons. And there's another stone there as well, which even has a nub sticking out of it. This is a Stonehenge. No one knows about this. No, no one has a clue. A lot of, you know, I've been there so many times having, it's basically my back garden virtually that I get, get a chance to go in there quite often. And it is exactly like what you find at Oyente Tambo and wow. like Aswan Quarry. And part, you know, parts of this look a bit like that. So what, what on earth, you know, what on earth is going yeah. on? Why are you getting the same thing as Stonehenge? And you know, and we have to, you know, there's an ob another obvious connection. These are like trilithons, like you get Stonehenge. Right. You know, so, you know, it's, it's a bit too obvious to mention really, but it's, um, but, but that is a similarity. You can't deny it. And, and there's actually a mortise and tenon joints you get here and you get that in parts of the Valley Temple as well. You get mortise and tenon joints with this little nub and a little hole in the stone above it to hold it in place. So, same elements of technology being played out in different parts of the world. I'll just flip back to the. Uh, I think you're right. Oh, yes. The yeah, the yeah. old the, the flower of life. We'll pause on this briefly. Interesting. Uh, interesting that as you say, like no one's real sure how, if it's etched in there. You know, Yusuf has an interesting take on it. He he thinks it's a distraction. He's like, people always talk about the flower flower of life, but what they they're sort of missing the the innate technological wonder of the thing. It's 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 drawn on, you know, like this yeah. seventy ton block of granite that's been precisely shaped and moved and and, and shipped here. Um, but yeah, who no one really knows. Like some people think Pythagoreans did this or something like that, you know, in in later periods. Uh, obviously, doesn't seem to be 
it's, I, I like I like this here. It's it's obviously a sign that that other people have found this place to be remarkable and sacred, pretty clearly. Mm. Oh, so whatever they did or however they did this, it's it's an indication that uh, yeah. I mean, it's a, this this place is pretty profound when you go in it. It's like you know you, you just have a, a brief think about it and you start going, holy crap! How how did how did anyone do this? Yeah. Yeah. Which is a geometry. I mean, I, I know I, I've talked, I've been in there with Yusef. He's kind of sort of not so interested in that. that. But the flower of life. Oh, it's it's incredible. Know, yeah. They're, they're, this, they're, they're pretty big, you know, and they're really hard. You try drawing that on paper. Very you know, difficult. Even with a compass and everything, compass and pens and everything. But you do it on a bit of granite, like 15 <laughs> feet up, you know, etching it into a wall. It, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, it is is, a mystery. that is tough. That is tough to do. I mean, Regardless of the ridiculous size of what, the blocks being there. Well, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I have a t-shirt with it on there. I mean, there's, there is a lot to. I'm not. I don't want to dismiss the fact, like the whole what it represents in terms of sacred geometry and everything is, it's profound too. But um, I was just, yeah, relating. Yusuf had that interesting point because everyone's looking at it. He's like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you know, look at the block it's in. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an you interesting. You were dogging on the flower of life, bro. Come yeah, on. I was. Yeah, I did. I shouldn't do it. I said, I'll wear my flower of life T-shirt for the next one. I, you gave I, that I T-shirt away. No, no, it's that's. <laughs> no, but it's it is. George, George yeah, Howard. it's the the geometry. You know, is kind of a universal <laughs> language. Um. Yeah. So yeah, it is interesting that that would be put there, and like your, I like is your. Is there point any on the that, ceiling? I don't even know. That somebody would look at that and say, "Okay, this is." Other people are recognizing that there are geometric principles Does at it, work in, in, yeah. the, in the structure yeah. itself. Does it show up in other Egyptian art anywhere? The flower? That's I a good question. It is. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, but they were certainly using them same geometric principles. principles. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, in the in just the design of the sites, you know, without a doubt. I mean. Look at the even the you know even your favorite guy Ramesses was um, <laughs> yeah, having the symmetry and his face and his yeah. face yeah. It's just interesting that if it you know if it's not really an Egyptian thing to draw, it makes you wonder who put it there, and that's why you, I guess you were suggesting the Pythagoreans maybe. Or, I've heard that yeah yeah and that makes sense possible I'm just, theory. But yeah, it's a. Uh, that's good. I, that's I, also that's I a good point. Yeah, because there's one I thing you know. Because that would have been uh, that would have been full of rubble when the Pythagoreans and the Ptolemaic people were there. Probably, yeah. they were probably just sitting on top of the rubble. They could have been, yeah, etching yeah. it in, so they wouldn't have had to climb up scaffolding, perhaps. So there floating could be some in a canoe. Reason why, yeah, why they're in there? Yeah, if it was full of water, yeah, for sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. But this this is a good shot here. Look at this. It just shows you the magnitude of some of these ridiculously large rocks. Yeah, blocks. yeah. I mean, just just to think about quarrying these hundred, what is it, hundred miles from Aswan, or is it 80, 90 it's, miles from Aswan? Yep, uh, this is this, this is upper region. From. But and still, so yeah. you've got to bring that over. You've got to quarry it, bring it over, carve granite into that shape, somehow lower it if it was lowered. Um, it's put just, it into place. Yeah. yeah, it's just absolutely remarkable. Then you see these beautiful. And then right there, they all blocks. Yeah, they were they were flattening the wall and stopped. That's the most oh, interesting yeah. part of this site to me. Wow. The, 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 the blocks are pillowed out, and then somebody is coming along and flattening it out and making the whole thing smooth, and they yeah. never finished. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. That is, and you can see where they just they just stopped work, and the yeah, you're marks right. are gigantic. They were, they were smoothing that wall out, taking off a couple of inches of material to make the whole thing flat. And they didn't get it. They, they didn't get it done. There are, there are a couple places like that. It's very much like the third pyramid. They have that same yeah. spot that's flat, and then it pillows out around it. And there's something similar know. in the what is it? Uh, it's not Karnak. It's uh, what, what's the place with the wheels? Oh, uh, Abu uh, uh, Abu no, Ghraib. Konark. Konark. This yeah. is an, it's oh, in Kon India. Okay, India. Konark, so this is a completely yeah. different place, but, yeah. Yeah. Egyptian but wheels. they're <laughs> carving these like giant, very incredibly intricate wheels and. There's a place where hmm. you see one of the wheels, and halfway up, it's there. It, it's all like beautifully intricate, and then at the top, it's just blank. Hmm. Like it looks like some kind of you know CNC, CNC machine, machine was, was going, going in and making all the detail, and just went halfway up the wheel and stopped. And stopped. Yeah. Like there's all the little figurines, and they're just really detailed, and then they're gone on the on the upper part. Yeah. So it's it's very similar that 
in this short here, just in the middle, you see that tiny little, is that a tiny little stone? Yeah, there's just another there. one here too. You get a few of these oh, as yeah, well. Like a... This is very Peruvian again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Just a little detail. I mean, there's no purpose for that unless they're just they're just playing. They're just. I wonder, right. you know, how much how much of this. One of the things it was quite hard to make out here is if stuff's mirrored like it is in the Bali Temple. I right. Think some of it is. There some is, of it is. I, I think. Yeah. yeah. But some of it is mirrored as well, so we do get the same kind of principles at play. Just okay, so sure now I also see that the, the door, the doorway is cut up into the lintel block. That's yep. mm -hmm. what I was seeing when you were looking in there. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yes, this here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You see that on all of them. Yeah. You get that. Um, you get the same technique, I think, at Tiwanaku, Puma Puma. Yep. I think um, so. In, in Bolivia, so um, <laughs> and at some of the the classic kind of like uh, sites like Cusco and the Sacred Valley, um, but. Yeah, I think uh, the Coricancha. What possible purpose does that serve other than aesthetics? I mean, yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's another Not inside bit. corner. <laughs> got you here for answers, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 my, it's it's the default answer for the actual Wait, purpose. Something is know. swimming under there. Yeah, this is there might be a swamp monster in that in that green lagoon. Ugh. But yeah, it, it does again. Another, it's another twelve, or twelve or so feet, and there's a connection. So they have a problem pumping out enough water because there is a, a, a shaft that leads off and down from from the area that goes down another, I think, twelve feet or something. There's and there's more granite blocks. There's a shaft that then also leads off a small shaft that apparently that's where a lot of the water comes in from, but it leads off in a direction. And I'm not sure anyone knows where that goes. Um, and it's, but it's been constructed, so there was there's clearly some there was there were things below this as well, yeah. Uh, and we just don't know. And in fact, I heard the guards when we were there talking about it. They were literally saying that they do they'd be pumping out the water, but it's the it's a lack of funds at the moment. They just because of the tourism and everything, they're just like we don't. There's no one can, no one's coughing up enough money just to even get a couple of guys in here working on with machines right. to to pump out the water, which is I'm just like I'm baffled by. Like who wouldn't yeah. want to do that investigation? Like. Or even just, I don't know. All right, let's go get a them. job, guys. Yeah. 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 I mean, just pitch one of these universities, guys that that, that have the partnerships with the, the Council of Antiquities. Yeah. I don't understand it. You know, it's just what frustrates me the most about this stuff is, is I don't understand why there isn't more uh, effort done in, in in tackling this and using things like laser scanners like proper high definition ones and yeah. uh you know all of the, the surface roughness tests, like more investigation into how these could have been made like the construction methodology that never seems to be the focus of the authorized institutional sort of driven investigations and it's just why is it down to the tourists and the groups that are in like this that come along with iphones and you know with the lidar scanners and that, that's you know that that's the only time that sort of thing ever happens it's i just feel like it's the new yeah. the, the tools we have today are non-invasive they won't hurt anything and they could shed a lot of light on this stuff and i just i think there's a lot of institutions that have the access to these sites and the partnerships to research them they I don't yeah, know why they're that, not that's, doing it that, that's that's the thing i i get that a lot that <clears throat> it's like going back to the time of flinders petrie a lot yeah. later with chris dunn that they, you know they tried to reconstruct like a smaller version of the pyramid people have failed miserably trying yep. to do it yep. they've never even tried to reconstruct the assyrian or the no. temple or anything like this because they know they can't do it but one of the things petri kept coming up with which is what chris dunn commented on and i've kind of been looking at petri stuff over the years yep. is that as technology developed during the 19th and 20th century <laughs> suddenly became clear how they may have been able to do things like the right. core drills for instance because there was a time when they were discovering these core drills before that had even been invented in modern times yep um, and so <laughs> and as technology moves on in our era it almost parallels what they were capable of back then and so we get we, we soon we're going to reach a point not too far maybe in the future where suddenly we know how they did it because our yeah. technology can actually match that. That's right. And so, so to, it may have been like magic, you know, to, to the, the people who didn't understand it, you know, yep. the, the non-initiated. Um, but, you know, you know, so what is going on? And so I think, you know, I think we, we have to wait to see where our technology goes so then we can understand where they were up to, you know. And I think yep. this is one of, the, one of the ways you have to look at it. You know, we're, not, we're not quite there yet. 
That's exactly what I, I have the same thought. It's just like I think the answers to we're, – we're well and truly advanced in a lot of directions, but we, we, our civilization's technology went in a certain direction. And I think there is so – there's and we're, in some other directions, we're only getting started. And I think some of the answers to this stuff may lay in some of those realms that we have yet to fully understand or to, to, to properly investigate. And I just think we should be open to that possibility – when we're looking at these sites, because that seems to be that's that seems to be a strong possibility when you look into like the construction methodology, the precision, and all these other aspects of this stonework, and whether and that opens up the door to functionality, you know, and purpose. And it's but if we consistently just try and put this stuff in the in the box of well, it's copper chisels and flint chisels, and it's all ceremonial and it's all you know for 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 uh, you know rituals and things, and it's all within that box of what we know of this primitive. Uh, civilization that that didn't have this capability, then we'll never get there. But uh, yeah, I I think that's a the technology yeah. aspects one that's just like that. It always drives me insane. And Flinders Petrie understood it. It wasn't until his time that we had enough capability to even put some of this stuff into context to understand that we're looking at a real mystery. You know, that's what's it's a meta point in all of this. Is a nice keystone cut. Um, that a, that's a good one. Yeah, and, um, you know, yeah, and uh, and I agree. I mean, I mean. What, what, I've got a question, actually. I mean, do you know if they found any metal in any of these keystone cuts? Because I can't, I haven't found anything that if there's, that, I mean, I know there's some metal has been found in the Great Pyramid, different yeah. alloys and stuff like this. But here, uh, do you, I mean, are you aware of anything? Because uh, I've not heard of it. I don't think so. I don't think they've really found much at all. It all would have gotten removed, I imagine. I know there's some keystone, some of these cuts that have that, like the the, the green, if the, in, in, in granite that have the green tinge of what would have been copper, I guess. And so there's some evidence of that. Uh, but no, I don't know of any that have been actually found with metal. I, uh... Like I said, like I said earlier, there's that, um, there's one example, I think in the Esmolium with set his name carved on it, you know, right. uh, of wood, but, yeah. but he could, but that could have easily been put in and later. Yeah. 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 And, uh, to, cause all the metal disappeared, but who knows? I mean, so, and that's one of the, that's one of the ways they kind of, dated the Assyria because of well, because, all right. these wooden keystone kind of uh, clamps. If there are metal keystone um, clamps, there's still a bunch in there. So, yeah, you know, this stones that are still together. Yeah, yeah. some of them are stone. Of like there's that. It's almost as if it's like a sl a slid on hinge, but that's I don't know if that's exactly what that is. Yeah, that's that's what that looks like a tongue and groove connection. Yeah, right I, there. I'm not convinced yeah. it is after taking yeah. a closer look at it uh, on this trip, but. It's almost like it's been cemented in now or something in modern times, yeah. but it's definitely been like quarried. That whole block's been quarried, and there's a there's a similar like cut on top there as well. That's yeah, on top of that it. block, so it's another like some sort of keystone but I, groove. I and there could have been another layer on top of there too. I think there was. Um, yeah, I want to add to what you guys were saying about these ancient sites, and I think this is we the the, the other thing that bothers me about this is it doesn't look like they ever whoever was building them, however long ago it was. Mm. They were in mid work and it yeah. stopped and they never came back to it. And you see this at Ollante Tambo and you see this here. Serapium. It, yeah, it, at the Serapium. Like it's there, something happened to people who could do stuff like this. And the, the, the um, all over the world. The obelisk, too. The, the unfinished obelisk yeah. is the same thing. They're in the middle of working on this monumental, massive stone project using whatever tools whatever they were using to cut that thing out of there and this, and they're smoothing He's the trialing. walls down. They're building the blocks. They're moving the blocks into the Serapium, you know, at Ayante Tambo, they're moving giant blocks up, up down one mountain and up another. And they didn't get to complete the project. Right. That's right. the thing that haunts me about so many of these sites is it looks like a, a construction project that never got completed. And the people who were working on it never came back to it. And it implies something happened that was catastrophic, right? This is, seems to yeah yeah I, I i can't argue that it, it does that does seem like some of it seems unfinished uh and a little random but i just i also i also don't know if that's the right i mean it's just i don't know if that's yeah, yeah if there was right. a if it may yeah if, we, if that's a part of the perspective that we're looking at it in terms of how we would do it, it there's a, a and i mean i i get the same feeling like it definitely like there's yeah. boxes in the hallway there's unfinished boxes there's yeah. The work on the third pyramid here at Alante Tambo looks like, you know, stuff was in motion for sure. Like Alante, blocks across the river, like they were being right. pushed. Um, yeah, 
but yeah, I, 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 it's it does. Yeah, something may have happened. I mean, that it does seem indicate to indicate some sort of cataclysm with some of these walls and the third pyramid and things. I just I don't know. Like I, with the finishing parts, it's just I can't I can't tell if that's it's certainly intentional or not. I mean, it definitely seems like well we're halfway through it and all they started it and then it's just tools down. So yeah, and I mean the the the, the big obelisk like. If if the story that we're told right. is the, yeah. they're cutting that thing out and they find a flaw, right? Yeah. So they're like, okay, we can't it's... use it. Well, you've cut most of it out of it. <laughs> you would take some blocks from it, you yeah, would, for sure. You would start using it for blocks, right? Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like it, 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 the same thing at Baalbek. Those blocks that are still in the quarry. The quarry. They're but like, the, well, they were too big. Just put them down, you know. No, you would cut that up into smaller it's, blocks. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that is a something I've researched quite a lot, actually, is the, the idea of the quarry being the sacred birthplace of the later temple. I've written a few articles about it for all these sites, including Aswan and Baalbek. And one of the ideas is that uh, where, you, where you take the stone from, that's like taking it from the mother. That's like taking it from the earth, the Gaia. Yep. And so that is the sacred spot. And then you actually choose where that goes very carefully to be used. And, and there's, a, there's often a geodetic principle between mm. where it's quarried and where the site actually finishes up. Like, for instance, Aswan Quarry is, if you draw a line from the center of the Aswan Quarry stone to the center of the, Giza, uh, the Great Pyramid of the Giza Plateau, it's 365.4 nautical miles. And that is exactly the, the amount of days in a year, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> we, have the, we have the same principles with the Bluestone Quarry, the whales, linking with Stonehenge. There's a, a perfect geodetic uh, 5, 12, 13 Pythagorean triangle linking them up with this small island and Stonehenge and the Bluestone Quarry. And, and, and it goes on and on and on. You could wow. like go into all the different sites. And you don't mess with the sacred origin point of the temple. And so this was, you know, you leave that alone. And actually, like in Olmec land, for instance, up at the Basalt quarries and the Tuxla Mountains, there's actually areas where rituals today are still carried out on these particular quarry sites. And so it becomes part of the whole system. And so, so sometimes leaving something unfinished is like also a signature of the builders, uh, of the kind of godlike builders who are building these things. So there's, there's different... Hmm. You know, it's just a theory. It's just something I've kind of been looking nice. at over the years, and I keep seeing the same kind of ideas pop up. There's always the biggest stone is left in the quarry. <laughs> That's one <laughs> thing that interests me. Like yeah, nice. Moai really too, big right? stones, Baalbek, Aswan, even at Easter Island, yep. you have Ryland. the largest Moai is unfinished yep. in the quarry. Right. Yep. Um, potentially at Stonehenge, there's actually two quarries. There's two types of stone there. So, so there, there's something about that. I think the Aswan and the granite quarry is really interesting because some of the granite also came from Elephantine Island right. as well. Not all of it came, from, which is the same area as Aswan, obviously. But so it's transported over water, then taken up the Nile and all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. so yeah, there's more. I think there's more. There's more to it than just leaving it unfinished. Hmm. There may be a purpose for it. Um, that still implies a global tradition. It does, oh, yeah. yeah, and, and yeah. again, yeah. it's just a theory. So you yeah, know, yeah, no, I think a... that's that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah it is. Actually. But if it's if it's on Easter Island, all these sites, all over the place, still, you're still like, okay, whoever was doing this has still got the idea. Like the quarry is the, the is the mother. You leave the biggest stone there on purpose, and that was happening all over the world. That's a yeah. That's a great. Global, that's a yeah. great example here of, of the same. I was trying to say, so, like the perspective. Like it's it's we look at it from a work side and a thing, and we're like, ah, we, it looks unfinished. But for like from a geodetic perspective, there's there's significance in some of that stuff yeah. from yeah. other perspectives, and that's yeah, that's yeah. I think I mean, understanding perspective is such an important. And, it, and it's it's just working out like there's always this question mark. It's something that's come up a lot in this uh, today in our in our talk today is. Uh, this is it unfinished or is it deliberate like that you know it's right. like yeah. you know mm. are they is it an artistic thing that the certain designers or artists or designer you know whatever you want to call them were actually like this is my this is my thing this is my signature i want to leave that bit flat and that bit's going to be puffy next to it this is right. something i want to i'm continue it's a tradition you know yeah, of right. this particular line of initiate builders you know that they only they do, you know, it could hmm. be connected worldwide. It could be this tradition. Uh, Cause I, you know, the people who were building this stuff had secrets. 
yeah, not everyone sure. knew about this. This was a yeah. secret tradition and it was passed down. It's ended up in, you know, the realms of the secret societies and the, and the Freemasons and things like mm-hmm. this, you know, because that's their kind of prerogative. And, you know, so there's, we don't know the, the deeper reasons, but it's just, it's, it's so mind blowing when you see all the, because you, you find the, so many of this, what appears unfinished and also these unfinished quarries, it's just utterly bizarre, but you know, needs more yeah, research. I, yeah, you're right. Now that I'm thinking about it, I could see esoteric, you know, like the, the, the imperfection is put in there imp- yep. on, on purpose. Yeah. Like that is a tradition that is, that is found in certain, uh, like I know, like the, I can't remember exactly all the details, but the, like, uh, Arabian rug makers, I think, did this. They, they would purposefully put the masters would put purposefully put a flaw somewhere in the in the tapestry that they were making or whatever, you know. And it's it's on yeah. purpose yeah. because they're saying that like I'm not I'm I'm not like the gods, you know. The uh-huh. gods are perfect, uh, or at least that's what I was reading that it may mean. Nobody, I'm not sure if anybody knows, but yeah, the idea of leaving imperfections on purpose is. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, and the the symmetry being not quite right in the temples, like this, there is some sort of meaning and symbolism and and yeah. purpose to, of some form yeah. to that stuff. It's yeah, yeah. you're right. Natural yeah. and raw. Yeah, yeah. it's a great. Well, while you were talking about that, my brain went in a completely different direction. But uh, I was thinking about the um, you know the magnetic field lines that are oh, yeah. in the rock. Right. Because like when the rock was formed, the magnetic field was a certain way. And so a bunch of things are aligned within the stone. Mm -hmm. So if if they were thinking in this geodetic sense, when they're cutting these rocks out and they're taking them somewhat far away, maybe they mark the stones and they put them all together where those field lines are still flowing in the uh, together. Right. The same. I'd be interested to to know. That's a really interesting idea. If this was a tradition, because. We typically only do these core samples on things that are debated as to whether or not it was built by ancient people or it was, const- you know, or it was a natural thing like with rock wall. And so when they find that all the magnetic field lines are the same, they're like, ah, it's natural. Yeah. Yeah. But if there, that was a consideration. There, there is this one place where they've proven that to be the case, actually. This is Avebury in England. Yeah. This is like the largest stone circle in the world. And also Olmec sites, uh, Olmec heads, for instance, some of them have um, uh, magnetic um, hot spots in the temple on the side of the head or in the belly on some of the later ones in southern Guatemala. This has all been tested and there's research put out there. Avebury, every single stone in Avebury Stone Circle, for instance, there's 99 stones, maybe 100. They're huge stones. This is seriously megalithic, this place. And every single one um, mag- is magnetic north, is aligned to the next stone and to the next one and to the next one. They're not, you know, and, and they've been tested thoroughly. So somehow they knew the orientation of the magnetism within, within each stone and lined them all up. And then down the avenues, the megalithic avenues at Avebury, all the stones point to each other in a sort of straightish line. And so that is certainly something going on with that and yeah I, I don't know i mean i assume that was going on in egypt it's just it makes sense because of the sophistication and if we look at obviously chris dunn i mean uh, his yeah. work on the giza power plant that would apply there very yeah. much oh, so. absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah very yeah. cool wow well yeah. that's uh, another 30 minute segment uh, yeah, yeah. stand yeah. has run out indeed <laughs> man that's been awesome guys yeah. that's been great yeah, Happy to do good. it. Yeah. 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 Thanks for joining yeah. us, Hugh. It was uh, no, no, good I time. appreciate it. You, you've just taken me on a little guided tour of a couple of sites I've missed and I really want to get back to. So yeah. I'm delighted. This year. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, hopefully, we can do it again sometime. We we shall. Yes. That's like a plan. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I appreciate Cheers. it. And hopefully, see you all in Egypt sometime. Yeah. Yes. Let's do that. That'd be great.